The purpose of today's session is to just have a quick review of HTML and just find out a bit more about JavaScript and PHP and what their role is, especially on the theory side of the AS computer science course. Of course, if you want to learn a lot more about JavaScript, HTML and PHP, there are a lot of videos on YouTube that you could follow. And of course, there are courses available on EDX and Coursera, which you can study to learn more about these languages. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's normally not recognized as a programming language but as a markup language. However, with HTML5, it's so close that you can actually create programs within the shell of a browser. It's normally used to develop web pages. Generally for a web application developed in HTML, server software might be required which is often coded using PHP. Now HTML operates with using basic HTML tags and they look like the left chevron HTML and then the right chevron so you can see those brackets and most of the codes are pretty straightforward. If you view the source of any HTML page, you'll probably recognize most of the coding. Very rarely do you see any loops. Most of the time it's just going to be these tags which are indicating headings, paragraphs and so forth. Now JavaScript on the other hand is a proper programming language which normally runs on the client side. Now if you're not sure what the client side means, if the script runs on a user's computer it is normally known as the client side and if it runs on a server and the output goes to the user it is then known as the server side script. Just remember that if it runs on the server and the output stays on the server it's not server side, it's still the client side. Now on screen you'll see a short HTML JavaScript program. Code this script in an HTML file and see what happens. Now you can use a text editor like Notepad and then you can save it as an HTML file. So you can call it whatever my first file.html and then try to open it up or you can use any online IDE or go to w3schools.com and you can try coding both HTML and JavaScript there. So try this simple program or maybe Google an alternative and try to get some hands-on experience with HTML JavaScript. You don't necessarily need to know this for the exam but a basic understanding is enough because sometimes you do get a question which will probably give you some basic scripting, some basic program and then you will be asked to decipher what it actually does. And often it's just a matter of knowing and reading simple instructions like, okay, here's a button click. And when you click this, a function is called those kind of approaches. So if you know pseudocode, you know any programming language, you can easily understand both HTML, JavaScript, and certainly our next one, which is PHP. Now PHP is another language that can be embedded into HTML. It's normally used for server-side scripting, whereas JavaScript is used for client-side scripting. It's coded and is stored as a .php file. So again, if you want to try to run the same program, this time with embedded PHP and HTML, you can copy this onto an online IDE and then try that. Make sure you know how to spot identifiers iteration which is basically loops and selection in both JavaScript and PHP because that's the extent of the kind of questions that you're asked on it. You're not asked to write any particular PHP or JavaScript code but you certainly are asked to identify and perhaps find out well here where, where do you see an example of an iteration in the code, where do you see an example of a selection in the code and so forth. Okay so the more you get familiar with it the better it is. That's all I want to cover for today. So hopefully you understand how HTML is used to display web pages. You should have experienced some HTML coding. You understand the use of JavaScript and PHP. And you probably had experience in just creating simplistic HTML, JavaScript and PHP programs. And of course, if you want to go ahead and go a bit further, feel free to explore HTML, JavaScript and PHP in a bit more depth in your own time. I'll see you in the next lesson.